The Pathfinder LED sequential spoiler light replaces your stock spoiler LED. Not only is it brighter than the stock LED, but it has a built-in running light function. The integrated deceleration flashing brake light means you don't have to purchase an additional brake modulator. And it even has sequential turn signals built in. This unit will increase your visibility and, best of all, it's plug-and-play installation. Your LED spoiler light kit comes with everything you need for installation. The wires are color-coded to match the included plug-and-play wiring harness. The only tools required for installation are a 5mm Allen socket, a 6mm Allen socket, a ratchet handle and a socket extender, a Phillips screwdriver, and an 18-inch piece of stiff wire. 16-gauge wire should work fine. We need to remove the four 6mm Allen bolts that hold the seat onto the Goldwing. These are located on the passenger grab handle, and you can remove these using a socket and a ratchet. Once these four bolts are removed, you can then remove the handles, and I usually just leave the bolts in, and then set those off to the side. To remove the seat, you need to start at the rear, and it's sort of flexible. The base of the seat is flexible, so it will bend, and you can pull it forward and up enough to clear that backrest. Now, you don't want to pull it all the way up because there is an electrical connector for the heated seat, as you can see here. With the seat in this position, you can now reach in and slide that little protective cover up and you'll be able to access the connector and disconnect that connector as shown. With that disconnected, you can now just carefully lift up and back and the seat will come off and just set it off to the side for now. Now we need to locate the 14 pin connector that we're going to hook our harness into. Now I'm in the back of the bike, kind of under the passenger seat, and right next to the frame, it may be buried under a couple of other wire harnesses, but the frame is that silver part you see there, and you can see I've located the 14-pin connector. It's kind of underneath everything. You slide back that little rubber protective cover, and then you can depress uh, the little release pin and pull the two halves of the connector apart. Now, even though it's not necessary, I like to use a little dielectric grease on these connectors before putting them back together. So I'm getting ready to hook up our, our harness that comes with the kit, and I'm spreading a little bit of grease there, and now I'm connecting the female to the male part of the harness, you can see there, and then the other half connects, obviously, to the other half of the uh, harness on the motorcycle. If your Goldwing already has a spoiler installed, it must be removed before we can install the new light. Remove the two trunk strikers by removing the four screws that hold them in place, and set these off to the side. There are 15 self-tapping screws that hold the trunk lid liner in place. All of these must be removed, and make sure to keep these separated uh, so that you put the correct screws back in during reassembly. With the screws removed, you can now pull the liner away from the trunk lid and you'll be able to access the connector uh, that's connected to the remote control receiver. And you just basically press down on this little plastic tab that's on the electrical connector under the trunk. You can see it here. Press that down and pull that connector out. Next, we need to disconnect the existing spoiler light from the connector under the trunk lid. You'll notice two more butt-style connectors, and those need to be removed as well. The spoiler is held in place by four bolts, as you can see here, and you use a 5 millimeter socket to get those out. Now, don't remove the four screws that hold in the luggage rack if you have a luggage rack installed on your bike. 
Using a 5mm Allen socket, remove the four bolts that hold the spoiler in place, but be careful to hold the spoiler with your hand so that it doesn't fall off. And then you can carefully start lifting up the base. It may be a little stuck if it's been on there a while, so be careful. And then just remove the spoiler and pull the wire through the hole on the left side. The spoiler light is held in place with two self-tapping screws. Now you'll notice I'm working on a carpeted surface because I don't want to scratch the paint. You could also use a towel for this. But go ahead and unscrew those two self-tapping screws and set those off to the side. With the screws removed, you can now pull the light free from the spoiler. Now, of course, there's a wire connected to it, but you can pull it out enough to where you can get to the other two uh, butt-style connectors, and I like to go ahead and remove those. Now, it's important not to remove the wire from the spoiler yet because we're going to use that wire as a guide to fish our new wires through. And I'm using some masking tape and a stiff piece of, in my case, I'm using 16 gauge wire. That's the green wire. And I'm going to tape it to the end of the stock factory wiring harness. And then I'll use that, I'll pull that fishing wire through and you'll see how this works. So just use some masking tape or you could even use uh, scotch tape. It really doesn't matter. Now you can ben begin pulling that old wiring harness out and that pulls the fishing wire, the green wire, through, but obviously don't pull it all the way through. Leave it right there. And then you're going to tape up all of the connectors on your new spoiler light harness as shown. And there's about five of those wires there. And then we're going to tape that fishing wire to the end of those connectors. And that's how we're going to get those connectors uh, and that new wiring harness through the spoiler opening. Now you can just pull the fishing wire through and just carefully uh, just go slow because you don't want to pull that fishing wire off that uh, through the masking tape and just kind of carefully feed it through as it's shown here and you can see it's coming out and now just pull it on through and now you're ready to mount your new Pathfinder LED spoiler light. You can use the same two screws that you removed from the stock light bar to install your new light bar. Just be careful not to over tighten. Now you can feed the wires from the new spoiler light through the center hole uh, on the left side of the trunk and then begin the process of remounting your spoiler. Reinstall the four 5mm bolts that you removed earlier to secure the spoiler in place. Just be careful not to over tighten. Now we're going to use that same green fishing wire that we used earlier to fish the connectors from the harness that we installed under the seat. And we're going to fish those up in between the trunk lid and the backrest as shown. Now we're ready to connect the wires from the harness that came from under the seat to the wires that come from the new spoiler light. These connect color to color. It's very simple. Turn your ignition to the on position to test the light to make sure everything's working. Check the left and the right turn signals to make sure the sequential turn signals are operating. And then depress your brake lever or brake handle to make sure the deceleration brake light works. Now I'm going to use some silicone tape that I have to wrap all of these connectors together and I just think it makes a little neater installation. Reinstall the trunk lid liner using the 15 self-tapping screws we removed earlier. Before reinstalling the seat, Turn the seat over and look for the four mounting discs. There's two on each side. Make sure these are pressed firmly into place. Sometimes they become dislodged and make reinstalling the seat a little more difficult. You can lower the seat into position. You'll notice two white nylon tabs at the very front of the seat. 
Now these slip underneath the top shelter as shown by the arrows. A little further back on the seat pan you'll notice another larger nylon tab and that slips underneath this metal bar that sits above the fuel pump on the gas tank. Now once you have these tabs in the proper location you can reconnect that electrical connector for the heated seats assuming that you have a heated seat and just make sure those tabs are lined up properly and then you can kind of bend this seat will bend a little bit you can kind of press down and press forward and make sure that all your uh, headset cables are out of the way. Using a 6mm hex socket or a T-handle, you can now reinstall the four bolts and the passenger grab handles.